everybody. Thanks for tuning in once again into the Writer's Block. Blockheads, thanks for joining us. Uh, we have a fantastic episode today. And as always, we were led into the show by the legend Chris Matic. And it's always a treat for us to have the country music legend, uh, the legend of all legends, uh, open up our funny, show. Funny story about country music legend Chris Matic, Steve. Oh, you don't say, Robert. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one involves guns. Uh, oh. One of the few gun-related ones. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, one drunk night in Wee Fest back in 1988. He's been at uh, Wee Fest a actually, lot. He did a lot of Wee Fests. A lot of Wee Fests. Yeah. <laughs> he calls them us fest because he's you know he he wants to be a part of it. Uh, he wants inclusive. Uh, but uh, he actually got really drunk one night and uh, dueled Hank Williams Jr. Oh wow! I never yeah. heard about this one. Yeah, no, this one's really flown under the radar. Yeah, he uh, he missed. They each took three shots. Wow. Uh, he missed every time. Uh, Hank got All him three. the second time, and believe it or not, he still has the bullet in his left hip. Wow. Yep. That is an incredible legend. Shot. It's almost unbelievable. Shot. Live to tell the tale. Wow. That's crazy. And he carries it around everywhere he goes. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. heard him and Hank Williams Jr. are friends now, though. They became friends after. Oh, they were friends when they dueled. You know, that's just what <laughs> alcohol does. Like, uh, I see. I see. Well, hey, we got a, <laughs> we got a, uh, <laughs> these are just getting worse and worse every episode. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> some are better yeah. than others. <laughs> uh, but hey, we, <laughs> what doesn't get worse is our guests, because we have another fantastic guest for this week's Writer's Block. Um, very, very funny comedian out of Chicago, Illinois, a comedian that both Robert and I have had the pleasure of working with. Um, the guy tours all over. He's He's been doing it for a while and really well respected, and we are lucky to have him. Everybody, Kevin Bozeman is here today. Hi, Kevin. Yeah, what's up, man? I mean, you got country music as an intro. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> are you a country music fan by chance? I have no idea. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean uh yeah yeah uh, chris chris matic is a uh, it's kind of a uh silly made up sort of character that he does so it's not really country music but we tend we, we like to play with it so it's fun i dig it i dig it yeah yeah um but yeah we're excited to have you kevin we we uh i i don't know if you know this about robert and i but uh we're painfully white that's how i would describe us um, no, you guys, I've hung out with both of you. You are not paying for <laughs> You guys are solidly white. Oh, it's I will take that. Painful. Yeah. It's not painful. Okay, well, I've been around painful white, and you guys are not, you guys are not even close to it, but you guys are solidly white. You guys are green bean casserole white <laughs> that is but correct me if i'm wrong that is like the best white right or do we still have some ways no. to go good lord no it's it's a c c plus white oh okay i'd oh, say it. okay get, you're, passing, gonna... you're not you're not graduating with flying colors right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'd say also like, white is that it's that white girl in the Ford Escort with three black passengers. That's that's like the top. Gotcha. That's that's creme de la creme white. <laughs> yeah, I can't beat that. How about no, uh, I know you guys can't beat that. How, <laughs> how about uh, how about like uh, Bill Clinton um, playing the saxophone on Arsenio Hall with sunglasses on? That's got to be so, a minus B B plus. No, I mean no, man. Because here's the thing. Listen, it's like every time you guys say something, I'm just going to shit on it. That's not my intent. <laughs> That's not my intent. I want you guys to know that. But here's the thing. That's what solidly white people think is cool. Ah, uh, all right. Yep. Right? You solidly caught white me. People, like, there's Bill Clinton and the saxophone. <laughs> if you really think about it, like now white people are way more into jazz like now yeah. than it ever used to be. So it's not. Look at all look at all the, the, the bands and stuff. Look at all the saxophone players and and you'll see way more white saxophone players than black saxophone players. Yeah. I don't know if that's you true. Think, I just feel it. I feel Do you it. think that's because of La La Land? Because I feel like Ryan Gosling really, really made the push for uh white uh whites getting involved in jazz with that movie. Oh, see, that's hilarious. The whites. <laughs> <laughs> the whites decided to uh 
get into that than we kind of took over. Yeah. Now, I don't, for one, you can't have me on your podcast and think that I'm going to know anything about La La Land. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just can't. Like, that can't be... <laughs> that can't be a question. You'd be like, Bose will know about that. Like, I can't. <laughs> so I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't tell you. I, it's just certain movies that come out and you just know definitively mm-hmm. you will do everything in your power to not ever have to watch that movie. Yeah, and yeah. that is a perfect segue uh, for one of the the premises that uh, you sent us. So, um, why don't you set that one up a little bit um, about the like the movies you just refuse to watch or don't want to watch? So I'm on this thing where where I was just like documentaries or used to be around to inform, uh-huh. like to let us know, but now they're just around to make us to make us angry. Even if you think about arguably the greatest documentary ever, uh-huh. which is uh, Michael Jordan's last dance. <laughs> in, some way, in some ways, it was just made to make LeBron James fans angry. <laughs> <laughs> just to be like, oh, listen, here is pure, unrelenting greatness, only consumed with winning, not consumed with brand, just consumed with dominating. Yeah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> like, it just, documentaries used to just inform me and just be like, this is how things work. This is behind the scenes, which was the last dance. Yeah. But now it's just like every documentary is just, they're just trying to infuriate you. And you're, you're just walking around angry about documentaries now. <laughs> Stop that. Like, yeah. Stuff like, that you, like, you went from just to just being a regular person, and then you watch a documentary. You're like, man, if I ever see Britney Spears' dad, I'm gonna beat the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, I watch anything that anything that's gonna take me out of my yeah happiness because I'm all about just being happy. Like I don't like, and I don't watch like documentaries. Or movies about things that's important movies, but I know it's going to be angry. It's going to make me angry. So movies like Twelve Years a Slave. Like yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to watch that movie. I know the slavery. I know it's horrible. So when you point out a, sp- a specific story where you know this black person persevered and eventually turns out all right, like. You know, I don't want to see that. That just puts me in a bad mood that that person even had to go through it. I think yeah. it's important. I do think, you know, uh, solid solid white guys need to watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah don't, it's almost- don't put that, don't tell me that I need to see 12 Years a Slave. Any of these movies where they recreate how innocent black people were killed or whatever and mm-hmm. they try to retell the story. I don't want to watch it. Any of these documentaries, like I watch uh how to 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 was it how to make a murder? How to make it a murder, yeah. Oh yeah, make making a murder. murder yeah. Right. Yeah. It should have just right. It's that movie should have just been called Niggas a Man to Walk. Like it was <laughs> just <laughs> It was just like all those things they was doing to him. Like he may very well have been guilty, but there's no way that they didn't set him up to make sure. Oh yeah, for sure. For and sure. it's just like those things. When I see injustice like that, it just makes me. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm angry. with you. I uh... documentaries. Just I don't want to see. Yeah, I don't want to see documentaries. I'm excited to 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 see what you guys have done. I'm really close to like being up, putting out my new recording, like my new album. So yeah. if I could get, if you guys can steamroll me a couple of minutes, Jesus Christ. This is <laughs> oh boy. Here I'm we so, go. I'm yeah. not trying to put pressure on you guys, but this is great. We'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll so see. when you mentioned the Michael Jordan thing, that's also what occurred to me too, where it definitely seems like there's only two kinds of documentaries being made right now, and that's either the Michael Jordan's Great or A Trip to Sad Town. Like, just because 
that's the only one that like you watch and you just you feel good unless you're LeBron James but like anyone else watching or, or like Charles Barkley or you know you were a big Portland Trailblazers fan <laughs> in the yeah, right. in, <laughs> huh? the whose hearts he ripped out yeah <laughs> <laughs> But even then, like, just, like, a good sports doc, like, it's still, you're, why, but no one's dying, right? No one's getting molested or AIDS or, you know, it's still just, <laughs> okay. Like, it, it's just a fun thing versus, like, all the other just brutally depressing stuff that's out there that some people just still want to consume. That's yeah. still... It used to be fun. Documentaries used to be fun. Like, oh, it's a guy that's going to eat... Uh, McDonald's every day and we're going to watch him get fat and see if he survives you know that's like fun and funny and now it's like oh it's a private island where rich people go and have sex with children it's just like <laughs> Jesus. and it's like and it's like not and the, the big thing is like the powerlessness of it you know as, as us of, as viewers you know what I mean like and, it, and we can't do anything about it I remember watching the um what was the water the the whale one the um sea whale. oh blackfish blackfish yeah yep. and I, I mean it was like gonna make me like an eco terrorist I was like <laughs> dreaming up scenarios where I was gonna go bomb a sea world you know like that's not what it, I don't yeah. know, that's not what entertainment should be doing to you I think it's supposed to and bring light to to things that's happening but Jesus man yeah. Just, instead of showing us the documentary, why don't you guys spend this time solving this problem? Exactly. And then, and then have a happy ending to the documentary. Yeah, like it's the the kind of people, like getting back to the powerlessness uh, of just like the people that watch and there's not really anything you can do. Like no one who's in a position to watch, to binge watch like four sad Netflix documentaries uh, for – eight hours and have cereal for dinner is in a position where they can like pick up the phone and call the judge like hey this isn't right like well yeah. you yeah. clearly don't have any power because this is how you spend your days so you're not influencing yeah. anything. <laughs> and it's even done it with reality shows like reality shows used to be like who's gonna marry flavor Flav? you know what i mean like that's fun and now right. it's like it's like oh my 600 pound life and right. <laughs> order yeah and orders and shit yeah, and it's like, oh god, or people that are just you know taking forty eight Xanax a day and shit. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, one of the biggest documentaries I think when I was in college was Grizzly Man. That was a guy that just hung out with bears and then he got ate by a bear. Like that's fun. That's just a funny, <laughs> fun documentary. You know yeah. how it's going to end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, we, right. We do know how that's going to end. He was going to get eventually eaten by a bear. <laughs> that's what bears do. And it used to be too, like, you know, we well, we watch sporting events or we watch uh, whatever. We watch, you know, the show Friends. I don't know what you guys watched back in the day, but just, just, just <laughs> I'm guessing it wasn't Friends. But in uh, between La La Land screenings, I would try to get in some Friends episodes. Uh, that'll be living single for me, sir, with the Queen Latifah Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. But yeah, it, you know, there would be. Like they're like, okay, we can make people sad for a minute. We'll have Sarah McLaughlin come on and sing a song uh, while we show, like, you know, shirtless starving childs, like, you know, batting a, a, a fly away or whatever. And and it, it, they would have it for one minute, but then they would also give you a phone number to call to like supposedly help the starving child or the you know the cat with one paw or whatever. And now it's just like with the documentary, it's like, here's all this horrible shit and you can't do anything about it. There is no phone number. There is no phone number. And then you almost, especially if it's really sad, like no one else wants to hear about it. Like no group of buddies are getting together to watch like some sad documentary about pedophilia in the Catholic church, you know, like, Hey, this is be a fun <laughs> afternoon. Let's crack some beers. What's uh, what's this NFL players that can't recognize their family anymore. Put it on. <laughs> uh, right. yeah. And then you, and then, and then, you know, still the next week you're going to watch football. Cause you got a fantasy team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's horrible, man. I hope, I hope the running back I drafted in the first round doesn't have this. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, true. Like a lot of it, it, a lot of the documentaries just ruin things that you're still going to watch. You just, 
Yeah. You know, you keep, you know, like the football thing, porn, you know, you watch a documentary, you find out they were more molested by everybody except their imaginary friend, you know, mm. horrible backstory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're still watching it. Yeah. I think I thought of this when we were talking about the Grizzly Man thing, and it might be a funny angle, is like the only kind of documentaries that are worth watching are, are ones that like aren't going to make you sad or ones where you don't really sympathize with the person in it. You know, like mm -hmm. Grizzly Man. That guy's hanging out with bears for two hours. Yeah, he gets eaten. All right, that makes sense. He had it coming. Yeah. yeah. You know, versus like a lot of the other ones where it's like innocent, sympathetic people that shit happens to. And you're like, I don't want to see this. But if it's just like a dumb shithead that gets hurt and you're like, all right, good. He had it coming. Yeah. Yeah, that's like the that uh the fire documentary. I think it's called Fire or something, or it's about the the guy that tries to set up the festival on that island. Oh, yeah. Fire Fest. Fire Fest, yeah, something like that. They did two documentaries of that. Yeah. To me, <laughs> those are fun. To yeah. me, those are fun. So those are the ones that I can get behind. Yeah. Where people are spending all of this money for just bullshit. They deserve all of that. Yeah. Everyone yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. The people that put on the festival, the people that came to the festival, yeah, yeah. the people that were bragging about them going to, yeah. all of them deserve a, the painful experience that they had. They deserve a bologna sandwich with no mayonnaise, and that's what they got. Yeah. <laughs> moving, 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 though they're disapproving, keep them jokes improving and right. Um, but that kind of gets us into the second part of this sort of like, um, like the 12 years of slave thing. And this is kind of what I was talking about when I was bringing up like Robert and I, uh, being solid white people, we, this is a fun exercise for us to be able to like, okay, we're kind of having to step out of our, out of our, our shoes and, and, and kind of try to think of like angles, uh, that somebody, you know, as yourself being a, uh, African-American, I would, I wasn't going to make it easy for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you gave us Steve's kind of, voice right now is walking on a tightrope. Yeah, I'm <laughs> cracking. It's cracking. Uh, <laughs> Being a, uh, a guy of uh, color, uh, a tinted window, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's cool for us to. I mean, we have to do it, you know, with female comics and stuff like that too. So it is cool for us to have to kind of step out of our own shoes and try to come up with maybe what you know a, a point of view that's different than ours. So kind of with that in mind um this kind of gets us into the other part that we of this sort of movie documentary section of like um just thinking about like the 12 years of slave which i actually didn't did not see but i did watch the free state of jones have you guys ever seen that no so i've not watched i saw 12 years of slave but i didn't see earning my solid credentials uh but i've not seen the free state of jones yeah so free state of jones is basically just it, it, what I'm what I'm kind of getting at with this is that it's just like all these movies about slavery that come out. And I, I didn't see Twelve Years a Slave, so I could be wrong about that one. But the other ones, it always seems like it's like movies about slavery to make white people feel better about slavery. <laughs> you know, like oh, we had Matthew McConaughey. He was in the South, but he uh, he deserted the uh, the Confederate Army and he started his own like you know his own like state and he like fought off the uh the confederate army and he like he was like a hero it's like some way they still make the white guy the hero in these movies about slavery or the civil war <laughs> it is just even glory do you remember glory uh kevin do you remember that yes. movie yeah yes denzel and morgan freeman yeah. yes and who was the leader but also matthew broderick <laughs> also matthew broderick That's okay. right. uh yeah ferris bueller is still just leading the charge. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got to have some conflict, and the conflict is the white dude trying to do the right thing or the white thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Matthew, yeah, that's right, Matthew Broderick. That's yeah. crazy. It's just funny to me. like that. It's It does make me feel that way, that it's like, man, this just these movies tend to really like kind of try to show white people in the best light possible during a time when you know we the only remotely close to slave movie i've seen of recent memory is uh abraham lincoln vampire hunter <laughs> <laughs> uh i didn't never saw it was it good did you like it yeah cause it, was, it was like it wasn't fucking really real and yeah you know yeah yeah and then he, he got to be he's 
He's they made him way more pro black than he actually was, but still. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely been whitewashed. Oh, Lincoln there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did the he did the right he, him doing the right thing was more of a business decision than a yeah. emotional this is yeah. like you know, a moral decision. It was a business decision. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean if if someone wanted to, you know, unveil a lot of his writings before he got to be president but like he wasn't necessarily anti slavery, he was anti slavery spreading. Yeah. <laughs> It was like, okay, the states that have it, well, okay, they can still have, but let's keep it from extending. Like Republicans anything. trying to defend COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Are there but, any? Uh, I, well, I had one last thing. We kind of uh, before. I, I still have one of the one documentary little bit here before uh, the movie thing that I didn't get a chance to get out there. But just talking oh, about okay. how sad documentaries are. If you were like, if documentaries were any sadder, they'd just be like 90 minutes of putting puppies to sleep. Like, because that's, that's the whole point, right? To make people sad, like it would win an Oscar. People would try to get me to watch it. Hey, Kevin, have you seen All Puppies Go to Heaven yet? Like, no, no, that sounds terrible. Oh, it is. You got to watch it. No, I'm not. You got to watch it. It's the saddest thing. You know, it's going yeah. to make yeah. you angry. Yeah. Is there it's anything we can do about it? Day. Nope. Oh, Oh, okay. So what if you talk about how people have all that rage and there's nothing they can do, so maybe that's where mass shooters... This is dark. But maybe that's where <laughs> some mass shooters come from is because they watched a terrible documentary. They have all this bottle rage. They don't know what to do. And then it's like, well, I got to get this out of my system. And they manifest it in, into a bullet and guns and shoot people. Hey, hey, if I don't know them, maybe they're, maybe they're uh, pedophiles. Maybe they're part of the problem. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, that's that's pretty dark. But it was one of those where, like, hey, let me throw this out. You know, it, it's not a polished podcast by any means. It's just a, you <laughs> yeah, know, it's a workshop following absurd logical. Something sticks to the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think there's there's something there too with just like the bottle rage you have that you can't do anything with. Nor does anyone else want to hear about it. Like. I do agree with you, though, with when you say that, like you, you, all of these things is raging and it just builds up until eventually it's a boiling point. Mm -hmm. And no, you might not shoot up a mall, but you definitely might punch the fuck out of your kid. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that kid will grow up to become famous. And there's a documentary about you because you used to beat your kid. And it's like a cycle. Yeah. People that, people that beat their kids after watching documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> a documentary about that. Oh, vicious cycle. Well, there's also the the only the other kind of documentary that's a big downer too is just like the you know people celebrities who used to worship that turn out to be monsters. Yeah, you know yeah. that one where like sometimes you like knew the what the Lance Armstrong was. one. Did you guys what watch the, the Lance Armstrong? Armstrong? Yeah. Jesus. What a psycho! He's a horrible human being. Just a psychopath, that dude. And then, <laughs> did you watch the Tiger documentary? Kevin, that was on uh, HBO? No, I missed that one. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Wow, that's a good one, too. That's a good one where you're like, oh, this guy's a psycho, but it makes sense. You know what I mean? Because like, his parents messed him up. I said Tiger's parents messed yeah, him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they messed him up. It's, it's pretty – you should watch it. I think you'd probably be into it. It's a, I definitely would be. It's a good sports documentary for sure. Because you're like, you're like, wow, I don't like this guy because he's – kind of crazy he's just kind of a dick but you kind of see why he's a dick and then you still cheer for him you know what i mean that's where it puts you because he because in the end he entertains us we yeah. can deal with fuckery if you have some entertainment value yeah yeah for sure. <laughs> adrian peterson stayed in the league and ray rice was out of the league yeah mm -hmm. why do you think that was because Adrian is more entertaining? Adrian averaged over four yards a carry, and Ray Rice did not. <laughs> Ray, Rice. Ray Rice averaged 3.2 yards a carry. So when he hit his soon-to-be wife in the elevator, they was like, you're out of the league. You're done. We're looking to get rid of you anyway. We didn't want to pay that contract. That, the other thing was the optics on that, because you could watch him hit his wife. Like you, No one ever saw, actually saw – uh, Adrian Peterson, you know, beating his kid or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, but I saw that elevator footage. Oh boy, that was yeah, not good. Yeah, that, was a, that was a 
that was a I'm about to hit a grown ass man disguises my fiance in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'd feel bad for laughing, but that is a funny way to put it for sure. Cause that's really what it looks like. <laughs> Are they still together? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Are they they really? Yeah. They're great. Oh, that's right. I mean, She's stuck. I recover him. from that. I feel like you can recover from anything. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, ex- uh, I don't even want to say it. I- I'm just out of curiosity. I, Cause like I saw it, it's hor- it's horrific. I, I I don't condone any of it. It's brutal. But just curious wise, I am curious just to know what was like what was being said. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not that she deserved it in any way. Well, Steve, but just what I mean, want to know saying, was being said. coming. Is that what you're saying, no, Steve? Is that Ray Rice is again, I am, you can hear coming. it in my voice. I am very much tiptoeing the line here. <laughs> but I am just like you guys aren't curious at all. You didn't want to know what was being said in that elevator. Oh, she was definitely attacking his manhood and probably said something about his mama. That's where if you if you say <laughs> something to a black dude about his mama, it's you man, you are Yeah. As they say in yeah. as as solid white guys say, you are cruising for a bruising. <laughs> <laughs> solid white guys sound like the dorkiest Caucasian tag team wrestlers of <laughs> Of all time, like they just come out to like Bachman Turner overdrives, taking care of business, and <laughs> just wearing uh denim jackets, yeah, 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 and, and only... denim speedos. <laughs> they don't even win wrestling matches, they just rezone the ring so no other team gets to be in it, and the cops just take their <laughs> opponents away. <laughs> they rezone it. <laughs> uh. That's funny. Maybe there's something too about like how maybe every documentary is is being made by some branch of like big pharma because the whole goal is to like depress you and then get you on antidepressants and that could be it. Who knew that every documentary made in the last twenty years was uh, was behind was an opioid manufacturer. <laughs> 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 and then they do a documentary about the opioids. There's yeah. no, there's no defeating them. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, that's right. They did. They probably made a documentary about themselves. We'll even show you. Yeah, how we're fucking mm-hmm. you up. There's nothing you can do about it. My favorite too is people that, especially when it's like a very social, like kind of social justice uh, documentary, and you'll talk to people. You know, I don't know if you guys have people in this in your lives, but you'll be like, "Hey, did you see that?" documentary about you know whatever whatever social justice issue and they'll be like well that's really one-sided it's like you didn't even a you didn't even actually see it and b you're just like it's just like this way to um diminish any like social progress is just just to be like oh that's just one-sided i've heard people say that about the making a murderer and i've heard people say that about the 13th amendment documentary and it's just like that's so fucking infuriating to be like they're literally people spent you know a million dollars to show you what's fucking going on and you're like nah it's not going on you know like it's the same thing with like global warming stuff you know it's easier to just disregard than have to deal with it yeah and that kind of that kind of it's you know it's easier to disregard it than to say i don't care about that and then have people go what the fuck you mean you don't care about it so it's easier to just be like that's the conversations I have about race all the time. Is that everybody is just so dismissive of it because they don't want to have the conversation and deal with it. It's just easier to be yeah. dismissive of like saying, you know, a president of the United States can say, stand, to tell a hate group he, to stand down and stand by. And people are going to be like, but I just don't think he meant it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He just didn't realize what, he's, what, what he was saying. Right. <laughs> right. No need to be frightened. They just run. Yeah, and that kind of gets us into the, the, your your final like topic that you kind of wanted to um, jump into, and, and that being uh, I can just say it for you if you want, unless you want to do it, doesn't matter. Um, but just this idea of white people <laughs> saying that they don't see color, and that is actually exactly what you just said. Is it's just the same thing. It's just like you don't even want to acknowledge it. You don't want to deal with it at all. So you're just going to pretend right. like you don't see it, which is bullshit anyway. Obviously, we all know that. But it's just it is. A, I've been, it's actually something I've been thinking about a lot lately. Is just that idea of um, people saying that, and it is. I I could imagine 
uh, being somebody that's a person of color, that that would be just like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> you know, like I know it's just it's just dismissive. You know, yeah. Like I don't see. Whenever I know this, whenever somebody says some shit like that, I know some fucked up shit's about to come out of their mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it's never like uh, I don't see color. I just ran a train on seven black dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yeah and i it, was gonna say it uh i think it's interesting that the same people that say they don't see color know exactly how many black friends they have like oh that's <laughs> you know i don't see color look at mark well what about mark why why mark specifically if you it seems weird you would single him out because there's no way for you to make any distinction apparently yeah yeah, they got them. They got uh, they got them uh, highlighted as favorites in their iPhone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, a good question would be like, if they don't see color, then it's like, okay, well, can, can do you see how any like do you see a difference between black people and white people? Because if they say they don't see color, then like, well, then what other distinction do you make? Because that's anything, anything else you say is going to be pretty racist. Like noticing the color, that's not intolerant. <laughs> it's, it's basically like saying all lives matter. I mean, that's really what, yeah. you know, I mean, that's really what you're saying. It's like, it's the same, it's the same group of people really. Uh, and saying all lives matter is just the white person's way of being like, I should get a therapist or like, I need therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Because, like, someone acknowledge my pain. All lives matter. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry your dad punched you every morning before breakfast, but this isn't your struggle. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I mean, are there are there black people that, that say that shit, that they don't see color? You know what I mean? Like, oh, we don't, I don't see white people. I only see one color. I, I highly doubt it. I can't yeah. imagine that that's going on. No, I mean, I don't know. You have to ask Candace Owens. <laughs> she definitely <laughs> sees white people. She definitely sees white people. She sees a sea of white people. Yeah, for yeah. sure. The other thing is like, uh, I don't see color. Well, it still leaves black and white, asshole. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I watch TV shows that didn't have color. I still knew who the characters were. There's. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, when you don't see color, you know what you see? Black and white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally the absence of color. <laughs> Yeah, and do do people? I mean, you never hear people being like, "Oh, I don't see ugly people. I only <laughs> see beautiful people." That's yeah, all I see. Right. I don't. I'm a Beverly Hills plastic surgeon. No fatties. I don't ever see any fatties. <laughs> no, fa I don't see fatties. <laughs> <laughs> Fat people. I see more of the same person. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very political way of putting it. Uh, I see more I see of you than I see of anyone else, but I would not, I don't, I don't see fat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the thing about the sixth sense? So like, let's just did pretend like we get to this place where there's like, you know, no one sees color, but then there's just this like one guy who's has like the sixth sense and he's like, I see black people. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> I see black people all the time. And barbecues. <laughs> or just like how how that that whole idea of like not seeing color, like how bullshit it is, we're like, okay, let's say some shit happens, all right, and you gotta give a report. You you didn't notice anything? You got robbed, the officer. Did you see the guy? Yep. Was he wearing a mask? Nope. Okay. What was he? You're like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. What? I can't, I can't tell you. He might have. I also don't see gender. Might have been a woman. Like, what Shit. the cop? Like, what the fuck am I even doing here? Yeah. <laughs> he had on glasses. What the yeah. fuck? Have he was wearing a shirt. Time what time color time? was it? Again, I told you, I don't see it. I don't know. His clothes <laughs> might have been matching. They might not have been matching. It's hard to tell when you don't see color. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That'd be fun. That would be great, right? If you're reporting a crime to sketch artist, black or white, and you're offended. <laughs> Sir, I don't see color. <laughs> I saw a person robbing someone, but I did not see the color of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I always say, like, I want I want people 
like the one thing I need you to see the color of my skin because the color of my skin lets lets you know that I grew up differently than you. Yeah. So if I grew up differently exactly. than you, you know that I I got different shit going on. And maybe if you invite me to your house, you'll know because I'm black and you'll know not to put vegetables in the fucking mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just picture like some like darky white dude who's like uh, going down to play basketball, you know, and he just doesn't uh, he doesn't see color, and uh, so he just ends up just in the it. wrong game. <laughs> yeah, still yeah, just doing running left handed hooks. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you doing, Billy? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I would think that it would be, you know, because like the way I've always looked at it is like, no, I absolutely seeing color is so important because that's a, it's like, it's at least a step in accepting someone of, as of who they are. You know what I mean? Instead of just being like trying to uh, just make yourself comfortable because something different is makes you uncomfortable. Instead of just it accepting already... that through not saying it it's it's a judgment it's saying that color is already less than you know because why is it even an issue i don't it'd be like saying like oh i don't see handicapped people you know you're already saying they're beneath you they're not equal yeah it's not a characteristic worthy of perception you know mm -hmm. yeah that's it's, not it's funny a, it's, that's it's not a, funny that's a, just a point it's, uh, it's the basis of being able to minimalize you. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. A, it's just minimalization of, of whatever it is you're going through. Go I, well, first of all, I don't see color, so you can't put this <laughs> shit on me. Yeah. You're exactly the shit I can put on you. Yeah. You're exactly the person I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you had this said to you before? I don't know. I don't yes. Yeah. More than once. Yeah, yeah. More than once, several times. Well, it's, it's, you know it's the people so, that, it's, you know the people that truly don't see color really irritate me because they'll be telling a story and they'll be like a guy and I'll be like, fucking was he black or white? <laughs> <laughs> I need to know. My rooting interest is this uh... I need to know. Whenever I hear a fucked up story and they're talking about it, I'm just like, oh, please don't let this be black. Please don't let this be black. Please don't let this be black. Be black. Yeah. And then when he's white, they're like, he's white. I'm like, fuck yes. <laughs> That's how I feel fuck about that. mass shootings. Anytime there's a mass shooting, I'm always like, oh, come on. Well, yeah, right. don't be another white right guy. One time, it's... let it be a Hispanic dude. <laughs> just... It's yeah, funny you we... bring that up because, like, even the the mass shooter that shot up the Asian massage parlors was like, no, I'm not racist. It's not racist. Like, really? Let's break it down. You went to an Asian massage parlor, shot mm -hmm. people, then drove to an Asian massage <laughs> parlor, shot some people. Then where'd you go? An Irish bar? No, another goddamn Asian massage, not yeah. racist. Not, yeah. you just, you, you happen to just go, those, those were the places that your car, your, your racist uh, Knight Rider car took you to? And he was just like, I don't see... I'm yeah, sorry, I, I don't see color. Just new to go there? <laughs> yeah. What was that? I said, your IROC Z just new to go Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was one of those self-driving Teslas. The cars hates Asians. I don't... I, it's the car, it's the gun. I tried to stop it's, both of you know, them. It's Asians? Fuel efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Dude, there's just so many un there's just so many not well adjusted people out here now oh man it's in it he's and a mass murderer the they're doing documentaries those are the ones that they're doing documentaries about i just can't get over like he he's a mass murderer but doesn't want people to think he's racist like yeah i yeah i, I killed a bunch of people but don't don't want me in with those guys like that. Right. Don't you, don't you put that that bad juju on me? Yeah. It's yeah, kind of yeah. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. I I shot people indiscriminately and took life I didn't care about, but like it could have been anybody that at that Asian massage parlor, <laughs> all right? There could have been any kind of person at that Asian massage parlor I've been to before, okay? <laughs> Maybe right. there would have been a lot of a lot of diversity at that second Asian massage parlor I went to. <laughs> it's not racial though. It's not. I'm not racist. 
How do you? Uh, I, I'm going to take this to a more of a serious note because I know you have you have kids, right, Kevin? How many kids do you have? Yeah, three. Three kids, and because you do a lot of stuff about your kids in your act, if I remember correctly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. How old? Are, how old are your kids now? Eighteen, sixteen, and three. Oh wow! Eighteen and sixteen and well, oh, dang. congratulations! Yeah, congratulations! Can uh, some make I mean, it to med school or something? You know, I mean, can you still congratulate someone on a three-year-old? I don't know. I was wondering that too. I think that like, when, is, when do you stop congratulating people? Yeah, I, you definitely I don't congratulate somebody for an eighteen-year-old. How the person presents it, and if so, it's like an eighteen and sixteen and a newborn, and you have to be like, "Congratulations! How old is he?" I mean, like three. <laughs> <laughs> in the big scheme of things i guess that's uh, still a newborn yeah yeah <laughs> oh man i i don't have children but I, I i fantasize a lot about um being a parent i don't know why i just think about steve, it steve's the only guy who fantasizes about impregnating his uh his lady okay and his fantasies <laughs> no i like it like a sexual fantasy it's like nah let's let's make a baby laying right next to him <laughs> uh but i was gonna i was gonna ask you um how how do you how do you do like how have you you know kind of i talked to them about they're both my two orders are both driving so i talked to them about dealing with police okay i just talked to them about actually i just most the biggest conversation i had with them was about was about the word nigger okay like a little bit i can't tell y'all not to use it (laughs) but (laughs) <laughs> I can't tell you yeah. who you shouldn't let use it in front of you. Yeah. So yeah. I've had that conversation with him. Yeah. I probably wow. need to have a refresher course. Why? Wow. Those are one of those things you got to, you know, you know, I like you, if you teach it somewhere, you got a job to keep having like these uh, new classes, these mm-hmm. uh, continue learning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how like I need to have with my kids. Just like, yo, man, just to remember or, <laughs> with your white friends, don't let them hit that. <laughs> don't let them hit that. Them, them nigga words the rap song. You, yeah. you hard stare at them when it gets to that line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's that actually brings me back to uh, the um, free state of Jones because McConaughey, because the whole thing is like he's poor, right, and uh, he's trying to get all the other poor people that are being forced to fight for the Confederacy for the rich slave owners that's the kind of the premise of the movie he's he's like getting them to um leave the army and desert and go to this area in um god i think it's like missouri or some shit um and, but he keeps using the n-word in the movie he keeps calling himself and all his like clan which are there are some uh runaway slaves and then uh but it's mostly white people and he keeps saying that they are also uh, you know, N words, and <laughs> it just felt so weird to me. Uh, it takes I'm me back right. to my that point of just like this is just again a movie for about slavery for white people to feel better about slavery, and now it is a movie for white people trying to like take back the N word, <laughs> which is like half of Quentin Tarantino's movies. Yeah, it's just so weird, I, and it was felt made me feel so weird, and just to see like hot ripped. Matthew McConaughey calling himself, <laughs> and, and it was just bizarre. <clears throat> so you're saying he had conflicted feelings the whole time? Yeah, yeah, it's very. Conflicted. I used to do a joke about that about the end where I was like, "It was your word first. You had the golden ticket. You gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> you had it. You had the yeah, Willy Wonka oh, chocolate factory ticket, and you let it slip away. Yeah. And now you want it back, and you don't know how to get it back." <laughs> <laughs> we'll never get it back either. I don't right. think. Right, and but there's so many people, white people, that just want to do. They always want to say it whenever they can just say it. It is just it's their it's it's truly a forbidden fruit. If you want, yeah. what you can't have. Think about Bill Maher, who's supposed to be like the most liberal and still referring to himself as nigga. Bette Midler fucking was like women are w- w- women are the, the niggas that are the new niggas or some shit like that. She tweeted what? Like, yeah, she, oh no, yeah. no. Midler? Beth, Beth, come on. New words. And then I, and somebody else had retweeted her and I was like, oh, no. there's all sorts of wrong shit. Oh about no. Just, <laughs> That's you know? not good. Yeah. It's really fun to watch white women really step in line and, uh, in front of everyone else when it comes to, uh, 
being um, oppressed and claiming that they're yeah. oppressed. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's and, really and, and, fun. And, 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 it, just, it just goes to show you that you you they truly have no idea about anything that's yeah the history of America and 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 black people to yeah. think that you could never. There's nothing. It's not even remotely on the same level. Yeah. Because yeah. I think like the horror is just so uh, you you can't even wrap your mind around it. And also, most schools don't. There isn't a thorough uh, course on this the extent of the the abuse and stuff. Like you know, Black History Month, you might read a paragraph about Emmett Till or something. But like mm. they, you know, I feel like most people come away from it going, okay, it happened like. 300 years ago it's not an issue any like they don't yeah. for them to shake off yeah what if there was a like a like a one like one day every five years maybe <laughs> one one 15 minute period for every five years white people can scream the n-word <laughs> just to get it out of their systems which brings me to another bit that i used to do where i said <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> I used to say that uh, I don't know if I I've been toying around with putting it on this album because it's been hard to fit it in. Like mm. black people should be allowed to sell uh, the word nigga to their white friends for five thousand dollars a year. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. You get a certificate, and then you can and you can get paid. <laughs> And then people will be like, what you say? You just turn around and be like, I pay for this word, nigga. <laughs> yeah, you're about, yeah, get, you're about to get hit in the fucking face. And yeah, and you, uh, you put your little right, certificate. You, and you got the certificate, and you're like, all right, cool. <laughs> that is one very important receipt to keep. You yeah, want to be able to prove that purchase that. if that is something you plan yeah. on using. Like, it's got to be. It's got to be wrapped. It's got to be taped around your fucking driver's license. <laughs> a shirt. It's got to be a shirt. Or you, or you get it brand, a tattoo branded on your back. It's the actual <laughs> contract. I would have it visible. If I was going to use that, I would. I would have it. Yeah, I would probably. It would be like Flavor Flav's clock on my. I would have it right on my chest. There, big. Right, solid white dudes know how to do to navigate that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Right. You would do that. Yes, I would. Yes. There's also a chance you would lose that gambling. Gambling? Why? Yeah, yeah. Like I could picture you in Vegas where you're like, do you have any more money, Steve? And you're like, well, I got this one N-word worth five grand. So, yeah, okay, fine. Put it on the Patriots. And then they lose. And you're like, no. Well, this has been fun, guys. Did you, uh, have you enjoyed this, Kevin? Are you having a good time? Yeah, man, this was dope, man. I think you guys gave me a couple of things that I can uh, run with, so I'm excited to and, thank and, you uh, for having me, you guys. Yeah, of course. Um, let's uh, let. Why don't you let our listeners listeners know where they can find you online and stuff? And maybe you got something you want to promote or something that's coming oh, up. Oh, KevinBozeman.com website. It's just my my tour dates, and then. Um, uh, Kevin Bozeman one for Instagram. Other than that, okay, cool, cool. And um, what else was I gonna say? I think so. Bozeman is B O Z E M A N. Yeah, like spelled like the city in Montana. Bozeman. Okay, cool. And uh, thank you guys for listening. You got anything you want to add? This is gonna come out on Wednesday, so or I'm sorry, on Thursday. So Robert and I are actually gonna be in Portland. Oregon this weekend doing the Helium Comedy Club. I'm going to be headlining on Sunday. Robert's going to be featuring. We're going to be there Friday and Saturday as well as the support. Um, so chum, check that out. Anything else you want to add there, Robert? No, that's all I was going to say was if you are listening in Portland, come check out a show. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks again, Kevin. Nice. And uh, thanks again for listening, everybody. And we will see you next time.